I like that because it does kind of suggest a maturation of multimedia in some ways in that so I'm, uh, the if you say make a collage in some ways I feel like that's kind of analogous to when you give first year composition students the generic thing like write me a lab report even though right. you know you're not right. a scientist yet or what have you so right. but so now you're kind of imagining well there could be more authenticity if it's yeah. sort of document this community right. and you can use these mixed modalities in order to do that, which right. I think, yeah, I like that a lot. Right. It actually is, um, it's a, it's a meaningful, purposeful piece of communication. Yeah. As opposed to just a class project. Yeah. 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 Um, great. Well, let me, I'll swing back to a couple of the stuff they've got here for us to talk about. And, um, when I, um, Aaron asked me about the curation, and I, I don't know, uh, I was thinking, what is this question all about? But now I kind of think I get it, which is, I didn't have any trouble accessing your text, mm -hmm. and I did it on a laptop that's like, you know, up to up to date with Flash installed and all of that. But I was thinking, if I tried it on my phone, or if I tried it on an iPad where Apple doesn't support Flash or something, then I might have had yeah. some challenges I guess so so I guess that's maybe something inherent in this question about curation and just the kind of status of digital text and so how does you know how do you think of your web text in in terms of its longevity or this you know the nature of digital sustainability yeah, yeah it was eye-opening for me to see how many of the earlier web texts that weren't published in Kairos uh, were no longer available. They were just on the you know the way back machine, and uh, I can't see um, Anne Wysocki's Brooklyn Monument. I don't know if you've been able to access that either. It has a you know kind of a plug-in for Director. That's maybe I could find that, but it, I think it would take a little while to get to it. So um, SWF files. I don't know. I mean, I guess they'll be around you know for a while, and I, there's also a PDF version of the of the web text. But you're right. I, they're, it's on on an Apple, on an iPhone, and so on. It's not going to. They're not going to be as accessible. And it's hard to tell. You know, ten, twenty years down the road, if you're going to need to download special, you know, archived software to be able to view this stuff. I don't think it really matters to me personally that much because you know it was a piece published in the moment and people read it, and so that's good. It had an effect that way. But it is really an interesting challenge. I know it's one that Kairos is very concerned about, you know, how to ensure that these um, these texts that are composed in all kinds of different, uh, you know, platforms with all kinds of different software are still going to be around, um, you know, for the duration, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So the ephemerality is, it's nice, ephemerality is nice, but um, so then when your text sometimes just like gets, gets wiped out. and It's, it's mangled, right, yeah, wiped out, right, exactly. Yeah, so we, we talk the talk about ephemerality all the time, and then, you know, oh no, my God, right. <laughs> what happened right, exactly. yeah. Well, um, what are you working on now? Uh, I'm working on um, infographics and um, from a couple of different angles, I'm interested in thinking about how uh, folks in the fields of writing studies are approaching infographics um, uh, maybe the same and differently from people in technical communication, people in information visualization, you know, in computer science. and. Um, and also, uh, yeah, so thinking about it pedagogically and also just kind of reading around the scholarship of different kinds of uh, ways of understanding infographics, particularly from rhetorical uh, perspective. It's really interesting because in, in computer science at these, you know, InfoViz um, conferences that they have and so on, there are a lot of people who talk about, um, you know, audience and purpose and context and they talk about different uh, they talk about narrative a lot in terms of infographics, and so I think it's um, you know just how to deal with data and how to represent data in a way that's um, accessible and that um, is is kind of effective, you know, effective representations of data. I think that's really an interesting area, and it's one that um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm going next. And also just kind of playing around myself with different, you know, infographic programs. And I just got a book on um, JavaScript and uh, data visualization. So that's what I'm going to be playing around with this summer is making some little um, JavaScript visualizations. But have you used JavaScript? Are you a... Are you a 
a bit. Yeah. 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 I think it's, um, I don't know. I, uh, I, I think it'll be fun just to kind of play around with it a little bit. Just yeah. to, because, you know, I can do the HTML and CSS, but to make things interactive and really kind of full, fully, you know, create, again, a kind of experience for the users, I think JavaScript uh, is an important element. I think it is, too. And um, I'm off on a tangent now again, but, you know, the idea of um, this, I probably should have asked this earlier in the, in the sequence, talking about <laughs> the composing of the text, but the technical kind of chops that you need to make these things. Yeah. I mean, I don't know where you come down on it. It sort of lines up with, uh, like in digital humanities, there's this debate about, you know, building versus kind of just critiquing or, you know, mm. co do you need to code to be, yeah. uh, you know, to really um, participate or to really understand these things. So I, I don't know, do you have any thoughts on the kind of technical pieces of it? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's just fun. I like that stuff. So I think, you know, I don't know if it's necessary. Mm, it's probably really, really helpful to be able to kind of have that experience and understand the logic of the code and the logic of, you know, kind of what goes on behind the scenes um, if you're going to be critiquing other people's work. But I, I don't know if it's necessary. I just think it's really fun. It's a kind of creativity that is really... Um, you know, exciting and different, different but similar to, you know, to writing. And I think students find it that way also. Right? I, one of the classes I'm teaching right now, the students are making HTML and CSS websites and they're just like loving it, you know, because it's just this new, one student said, you know, I feel like I've been shown the secret entrance to this, you know, totally great geeky world where I can just sit there and, you know, type code and have things happen. And so, I mean, there's something that's really you know, creative and, and fun about it. And, um, yeah, but with the, with the Kairos web text, that was flash before they started doing action script three, which really was challenging. That kind of pushed me a little bit. Um, and then, um, yeah, so I'm going to try to dive back in from another angle from the JavaScript angle, but yeah. That's nice. Ah. Yeah. Um, the digital, um, visualizations and data I think that stuff's fascinating too I mean I'm not I don't know how to do it very much but I think it's um, something we need to kind of participate in not, yeah not just hand it off to social sciences or something you know. right no exactly and it's I think that's there's some really interesting things in digital humanities that are going on with just visualizing text and different ways of analyzing text and so on that we can work with too you know in our field so yeah. Great. Well, um, this isn't on the list, but I thought it might be nice if we, or if I asked you something about Kairos. How how has Kairos been important to your work? Kairos is the is the place. I mean, it's um, you know reading web text in Kairos before I started writing this stuff myself was really like inspirational. Just knowing that there was a different way to do scholarship and a different, you know, kind of venue for scholarship. And then um, publishing there and working on Inventio has just been so important to me because I get to work one-on-one -on -one with uh, fabulous authors like yourself and, and others and really kind of uh, talk with people and really understand how different scholars approach different kinds of questions and then create, um, you know, scholarship using these... Um, I don't know, using uh, all kinds of different uh, materials, you know, and different approaches. So for me, it just signifies the range of possibilities. And people, you know, all the Inventio web texts that I've worked on, they've been di so different, you know, prezzies and videos and all kinds of, you know, kind of flash and uh, all kinds of different things. And it's just, like I said, I think Kairos is really such a, a great place for, um, for a range of approaches to, to really important questions in our field and also, you know, for doing it right. I mean, behind the scenes, the way Kairos does it from the, the whole edit, the process of editing, you know, when people submit manuscripts and the kind of feedback they get and then the stages where the manuscripts go through the editing, there's all kinds of challenges and, you know, doing, you know, meta tags and all kind of, you know, kind of making things right behind the scenes as well as making them appear right on, on screen. So it's not an easy undertaking <laughs> by any means. I'm, I'm sure Cheryl could say more about that. But I think it's so worthwhile and so valuable, I, again, just as a, 
uh, an alternative venue for publishing for scholars who are interested in publishing this sort of thing, and also just as a um, a place for different kind of scholarly experiments. You know, I'm sure you feel the same way. It's just it's uh, there are other places obviously that you know like Kairos, but I think Kairos is for our field at least is really the the it's really taken the lead in multimodal scholarship. That's a good question. I'm glad you asked it. I wish I had asked that of Susan. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, yeah. and I keep wanting to chime in, but I'm also, you know, I don't want to ruin your video, so I'm not saying, oh, yes, I, you know, I agree with everything you said. I had to do the same thing. You know, you can't, like, you can't make any noises while the other person's talking, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. so well, I'm going to turn off this recorder then. I feel like. Um, okay. then